Okay, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good evening. Good evening. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Uh, we are broadcasting today from StreamYard, again, it's tradition on YouTube and LinkedIn. So if you'll be so kind and put in comments that you can hear and you can see us well, that, that would help us a lot. It, it's always taking a little bit, you know, time before, you know, uh, StreamYard is connecting to the LinkedIn and YouTube. Yeah. Okay, we have a Finsky, Krajanek. Yeah, it's there beginning. you are. Like Thursday. Good evening from Finland, my darling. <laughs> we have you in our hearts. Good evening. So we have a uh, YouTube is up and running. I will uh, check on the because uh, we see only in the stream yard people from YouTube, I think. And let's let's check uh, LinkedIn. I will, you and know. As LinkedIn is coming in, oh, right there they are. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, hey, yes, you can. I see it. You know, absolutely. Yeah, and there might already be people who are going, I have to go back to the office. I already have questions before you even do your introductions. No, there are. Yeah, yeah there are only they want it. LinkedIn is up and running. I see it. You yeah. know, my, so my, if you have a question at any time, put it in the chat box. Yeah. Guys, we will talk a bit, but whenever you have a question, if you have a question now, shoot there, you know, questions, because last time there was a good discussion, very interactive discussion. So. Yeah. Maybe let's introduce ourselves. So, lady first. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Kristen. I am a leadership and performance coach, getting everyone to expand what they believe is possible for them to make happen. So all of us think, OK, I could get pretty far in my leadership or I could get to that next stage in my career. I actually prefer to blow that up and say, no, 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 that's not your potential. Your potential is 10 times that, 100 times that, a million times that. You could go somewhere way bigger. So that's what I like to do. And I'm the CEO of my own boutique leadership development firm called Kristen Coaching and Consulting. Um, and Jan and I met through the Institute of Coaching, which is based in Harvard. I'm also a part of the Forbes Coaches Council. I've won awards for the executive coaching. Um, and recently, my passion has been running. So I mentioned in last week's session that I'm going to be doing a half marathon this weekend. So you got to wish me luck. I did a run today and it didn't go so well so but i had jan in my head he was my mental coach in my head going you can do it you can do it don't worry about the pain in your knee keep going I, keep my personal through. record for half marathon 156 when i was 58 years old you know so you have a you know a high bar well i'm trying you to bring able I'm, to do it below two hours you know because you are much this younger. is my goal my goal is one hour 59 minutes 59 seconds <laughs> So you all can be thinking of me, cheering me on, no. wishing me luck for this Sunday. Um, and of course, I'm happy to tell you more about what I do throughout today's session. But I want to, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, which is crazy to me, but for anyone who doesn't know a little bit about Jan, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, first of all, I'm a good friend of Lisa. She's like a mix of Swiss and American, which is quite interesting. <laughs> so I'm very serious and on time, but I like to party. And I tell the truth because I'm from New York. So uh, quite interesting career. I spent 22 years in Microsoft and I started really from very, very, you know, bottom. Uh, admin assistant were like 56, level 56. I was like 57. I was a marketing specialist. And I finished as a president for Europe, as a chairman for Europe, which I did that function for, you know, eight years. So uh, uh, I learned a lot. I work with people like, you know, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer, Jean-Philippe Courtois, who is now Microsoft president. I did a lot of good things, uh, uh, but I also was depressed 10 years ago. We, we can, you know, talk about that, how to avoid, you know, depression or, you know, burnout, because I think it's important that uh, you know, today people in sport, they know how to do recovery. We still struggle, you know, in business. And I retired almost seven years ago. I, I obviously coach like top managers. I do several courses. I have three books, Positive Leader, I'm Looking, Children Potential and Family as a Team. But I also coach for five years. I'm the uh, mental coach for the Czech Olympic top team. But I also coach people like Patrick Schick, who is one of the best, you know, soccer players now in, in Europe. So it's very broad. And I also do classes for the kids, you know, uh, since like uh, uh, five years ago. So it's a, it is a many things. But kind of the common denominator is really 
uh, unlocking human potential, unlocking in the terms. So they have not only good results because results are good, but it's like short term. Uh, they should also like what they do. They, they, they should be common purpose behind what they you know do, right? Because if people like what they do, they are not only successful one or twice, the once or twice, they are successful, you know, long term, right? And today team is really how to, you know, return back to the normal, which probably will never be the normal as it was before the COVID. Yeah. But it's kind of the new normal. And human, you know, brains are quite okay for that because what we do, we like learn and then we have it's called homeostasis we have a little bit plateau and then we learn again and that, that's what we that's what we that that's what we do as a human beings right so this is really probably at least in my life and i'll be uh, in two months uh, 60 years old it is quite you know unique time one team which we would like also to discuss with lisa which is quite interesting trend now that some traditional businesses are calling people to return back to the offices, at least in some countries, okay? Not, not in all yes. countries. And some, I would say, digital businesses like Google, Microsoft, they are saying, hey, 15, 20% people, like every day, max, you know, right? So what is the right mix? Obviously, the, the health, you know, first, right? But what is the right mix and how we should work with our energy? Because we were like split it out of the teams, you know, for many, many months. And it's not the same. If we have this discussion like digital, it's not the same like, you know, uh, be with the other people in the in the in the same room. Right. It's really not. And Jan, I just have to say, I don't know about any of you, but it saved me so much time and effort while we were here in COVID and in lockdown on getting dressed. Any of you, is this happening for you as well? You have your nice shirt and then you have your leggings and your workout yeah, pants. You yeah. <laughs> I have also my shirt. Exactly. Shirt. Absolutely. It was so great. Nobody knew business up front, right? No. And now, it's like, yeah, maybe you can have a tie and you can be in the shorts, you know. Right? I know. I had to practice walking in high heels again. I was so used to wearing socks and slippers around, right? And so it's a very big difference to go back to also not just having to get dressed but also just the amount of stimulation that it takes to be around people right so when Jan and I are going to talk today about energy management we're so used to it being quiet around us again we don't know how to have really loud neighbors and people around us and a buzz that's going on in the room next to us and people popping by our desks we're not used to that much overstimulation anymore I don't know if you've noticed, Jan, has this happened to you? Have people lost a little bit of their social skills? I feel like people <laughs> are maybe a little bit more rude or maybe, you know, aren't so friendly anymore. Um, and yeah, and I, we have to... I, I yeah. think, yeah, what I, what I think, people are really not shaking the hands in, like before. Mm -hmm. That's number one. People are not hanging. I'm still hanging people I mean, I am like vaccinated, whatever. I really am taking care of uh, all of that. But uh, uh, I don't know if that will ever return back. And I'm afraid because shaking the hands, it's not only gesture, but it generates oxytocin. It means from the history, I do not, I do not have any weapon. You don't have any weapon. We trust to each other, right? You know, <laughs> no weapons. So, no weapons. This is I'm not coming for anyone. <laughs> This is a very simple and maybe stupid example, but nobody is really studying in terms of the psychology. What does it mean? I just talked to my dear friend, Professor Hesche, last week. Depressions, at least in Czech Republic, during you know COVID, uh, increased three times. You know, right? Yeah. Almost three times. You know, uh, what increased the ideas to you know commit suicide, basically. To, right? So. Those kind of the things are, you know, definitely there. And if you if you think in the in the past on how our predecessors were working with the energy, okay, when they were like hunting, obviously they were hunting. There was a, some stress and some energy consumption, but then they recovered. Okay, hunting having a rest, and stress was very much, you know, acute stress. 
which in fact strengthen the skills, both mental and physical skills, of our predecessors. Because if the stress is short, you know, adrenaline and cortisol are like in the peak, and then you recover and you are getting like out of the comfort zone and you are getting used to that, okay? The, the problem today, we don't have like the somebody like threatening our lives, like some, you know, animals or some other people, majority of the time, right? But what is what is happening? We have, and you you mentioned it. It's like FOPO, fear of other people opinion. Okay, and very oh. often this stress is like chronic. Okay, and the chronic stress, unfortunately, you generate like cortisol and adrenaline all the time, and because your brain really works like a huge chemical factory, is changing. You know those. Uh, you know. Uh, 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 hormones into you know uh, your uh, physicality into your physiology because if you look if you are in the environment where you can use your strengths you like what you do there is a good team so it's about you know endorphins it's about dopamines you know and 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 and, and oxytocin and and other you know chemicals and you feel good and that not only you feel good, but your immunity is improving, okay? If it's the other way around, if there's a chronic stress and there is a toxic relationship, okay? It's about adrenaline and it, for a long time and cortisol, and that's lowering your, it's not good for your health and it's uh, even lowering your, you know, immunity. And that, I think that's the, that's the real problem because COVID, it's obviously a health issue, but then it's very stressful because you still need. It's like again, you they are like the 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 media. They are masters. Like if they today, for example, in Czech Republic, the numbers were not that high as previous day, but they still said, but still are twice as a week ago. Okay, so they try to dramatize it as much as they can. Okay, yes. and it's not especially for the for the old people. It's not good, it, and I think it's so long, you know. So. They are putting yeah. you under the stress, number one, and we are like socially divided, you know, right? Now, hopefully, it's like getting better. But those are the, those are the real issues on, on our energy, that the question is, can we really use our, you know, energy in this environment? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, the, the first thing, the big elephant in the room to be addressed is we have over the last 18 months completely depleted our energy. It has been constant uncertainty. As Jan explains, uncertainty in the brain is the worst place that you can be. The stress levels go up, the cortisol levels go up because your brain doesn't know. If this were a tiger coming at you, if you no. know the tiger's coming, you run. But every day we wake up and going, is the tiger coming? Is the tiger going to come? Will it come tomorrow? Will it come for me? Will it come for my family? Will it come for the economy? Will I lose my job? And there's so many different possibilities and no resolution. And every day we woke up uncertain and are burning our energy out. Now, I don't know about any of you who are listening right now, but I would say 99.9% .9 of people I've talked to, friends, family, people that I coach, they never actually processed what happened. They never actually said, okay, what's going on? How do I feel? How do I lose that energy that I've been building up? How do I become okay with the uncertainty? They just kept moving forward. What else could you do, right? right. And so we have all of this built up stress. I think that's why people are a little bit more rude. They're, they're, we have this built up tension. Already we are, you know, you get on the train in the morning to commute into work and I'm looking around like I don't want to be near people. I have my mask. So there's no friendly smiles. We're not connecting with humans. We're all masked up. Right. So already the the energy has been burnt. Now I'm coming in. Your energy is burnt again. I come into the office. Lots of loud noises. Lots of things going on. Lots of people trying to make up lost revenues or things like. I mean, it's just a constant burning. More, more, more. Spend more energy. <sighs> Exhausting. So now, Jan, I think of what our friends who are watching want to know is. So what do you do with that? Okay, yes, I'm burnt out. I've been working my butt off for the last year and a half, but what do I do? What what other options do I have? We have we have also Fernando, our colleague from IOC, he's 
online. Hi, and, uh, you know, uh, Miko, Miko wrote that Jan's connection made him look like a Minecraft today. <laughs> do, you, do you see me? Do you, Lisa, do you have a problem with my connection? Your connection is fine, but you look a little bit pixelated. So we see tiny little squares of you versus oh, really? like a beautiful picture. I, I see, I see absolutely like sharp you and me here, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, okay. you, right. listen, you're still Let's, as handsome as ever. Don't okay. worry. All, all right. <laughs> that's that's, so that's the litmus test. Let's, Let's talk about four wonderful, you know, hormones and what uh, how, what you can do in those times, whether it's, you know, online or, you know, face to face. And then we can talk how to use our, you know, energies. By the way, uh, in old Greece, the, the thing is that we we dramatize the function of the time you know right because in old greece they knew like you know the, the chronos was like the time for going from the past to the future and kairos was like being in the present moment to really live the life okay and then in 1965 you know gordon moore said that every second year uh, you will double, uh, you know, computing uh, power around the world. And that's the exponential relationship. So there's a huge pressure on our concentration. And we over-dramatize the function of the time over the function of our energy. You cannot manage time. At the end of the day, what you can do, you can manage your energy in inside of the time. You have some time, you can manage your energy. For example, I do whatever is like need some more creativity. I do it in the morning or after three o'clock. I know I'm not creative from one till three. I do something which is like, you know, repeatable, right? Uh, and, and stuff like that. So it is about energy. Now let's talk about those four hormones, right? Number one, endorphin. If human beings are doing something they like, which is bringing them into the flow, okay? Those are the moments you're doing something which is not necessarily easy, but you like what you do. Endorphin is released. Endorphin is very good for your body. Endorphin is good for your uh, immunity. And endorphin is 100 times, you know, more powerful than morphine, which means endorphin is for the time of your performance, killing pain, or if you are tired, you, you don't feel to be tired. So endorphin, so do things you really, you know, like. Okay, oh, that's... Yeah. The other thing is our brain likes structure. Our brain likes, you know, plan. So make sure you have at least three, four things structurally in your, you know, schedule. And then whenever you finish those things, dopamine is released. Dopamine is like reward hormone. So you feel good because you are rewarded. Hey, I finish it. But dopamine is giving you energy to continue into that work. Okay, so. Endorphin is about doing what you like. Dopamine is about having, you know, schedule. Very often, people, if, if there is some kind of a crisis scenario, we are like, oh, I'm giving up. It makes no sense. There is a COVID. You know, what should I do? Right? We should still have a schedule. What people do, when I was in the mental hospital, what they try to get you back, it's like your, you know, schedule. Some schedule. There were some scheduled activity, like physical activity or some mental activity and stuff like that. This is for a good reason. Because if you are depressed, you know, you don't like anything, you don't want to move, you don't want to think, etc. Right? This is why schedule is really good and schedule is kind of the driving, you know, dopamine. And now let's talk about those two serotonin, which is like being together, hormone being together, if you are together with the other people. So at least through the, through the you know, uh, screen, be with the other, with the people, you know, you like, have some discussions and so on, you know, but preferably be, you know, face to face, obviously. Now, at least in some countries, it's, it's possible. So this is the steam hormone. And if you help some other people, and it, it can be small, like just the recommendation, what to watch on YouTube or how, which, you know, a book should I read? Oxytocin is released and that's the hormone of, uh, of our, you know, trust, right? So those are like four hormones which are giving you like more, you know, happiness, but you have also more, you know, energy. It's not that uh, difficult. It, it is, I, I I know this is very tough because again, I think it's in Romania and in, in Baltics, they have still kind of the lockdown now again, you know, after mm -hmm. this is the third time in the, in the row, you know, right? This is not easy, but at least those are like things 
which you can you know do regularly and which can help your you know brain to like get healthy and stay healthy let's put it this way yes and this is perfect. And Jan, what I've started doing is just having noticings of these tiny things, what gives me energy, what brings out those hormones that you were mentioning, and what takes away my energy. And as I've looked throughout the day, it's really small things that when I made these tiny little shifts, it made a huge difference. So for example, for whatever reason, when my kids are coming up and they're pulling on me and they pull me in the down direction, I don't know why, I can't explain it, but when they pull me down, my body releases cortisol stress. I feel like I'm being drowned or something, I don't know. And it used to be that I just said, oh, they're kids, let it go. And now I said, hey, you know, I really don't um, like when you do that, it really brings my stress hormones up. If you wanna come and, you know, come to me, come to my side or call my name, but don't pull me down. Tiny, tiny thing, right? Very small, this right. can be done by anyone in lockdown. Start to notice, not rationally, what do I think should be by giving me energy or taking away my energy, but really noticing what's in your body and then making these tiny changes. When I made 10 of those tiny changes throughout the day. So for example, when I notice I'm tired, what I do is I turn off this light. And then when I'm back up and feeling refreshed again, I can put it back on. But just turning off that light and giving my eyes a break from this input, by the end of the day, it's a completely different person. And so these are all things that we can do at home, whether we're in lockdown, whether we're with people in the office, to find the small things that take our energy and then remove them. So we're just filled with more energy, not depleted with energy. Well, when uh, Lisa mentioned light, it, it is good, like when you get up in the morning to go, you know, out. And you don't need to look, you know, if there's no sun, fine. If there's a sun, you know, it's even, you know, better. But take, a, you know, a real uh, natural light for 10 minutes. And it's helping you to, like, set up your brain and everything, okay? And then if uh, you do some work after, like, one hour working in front of the PC, go outside again and go around the, the par like the panoram panoramatic you know view it's helping again your you know eyes i mean i don't need to tell you those are like uh, you know blue uh, uh light uh, blocking glasses you know right i wear like from seven o'clock on in the evening uh i wear those glasses because you know your brain it's like if i would not wear them my brain would say 10 o'clock, there's like, you know, noon, you know, and you have a problem. Yeah. Time to party! <laughs> and sleeping is, sleeping is really, you know, super important, right? So let, let's talk about those four energies. And you know what? Uh, if you can, uh, there are some people like Edward and uh, Finsky, Krajanek, or Radek, who are here, you know, quite often. If you can put in the comments, what if you have some tips, what is giving you energy, if you are like tired, and you want to re-energize what is giving put in, in the comments what is giving you energy back because that's a that's yeah. a good learning also for us you know. yeah share with the team and jan and i listen to music and pump ourselves up before we have these sessions <laughs> <laughs> right that's a music can be a really big mood booster the other thing you can do is now that you're back in the office if you're not used to being around people having so much visual stimulation having so much noise grab your noise canceling headphones put on some classical music and watch your energy calm a little bit, right? These are very practical tips. And some people say, oh, I can't for this reason or this reason. I'm going to challenge you and say, just try it. See what happens, right? I now take, I don't know, Jan, if you do this too. For meetings, I can, if it's a nice sunny day, I'll take my headphones, I'll take my phone and I'll go out for a walk and I'll say, hey, do you mind if I take this as a walking meeting because I need to be out in the sun today? Right. And of course, at first you think and I'm and I have cl coaching clients. So, of course, I think, oh, I have to show up professional. But as I started doing that, they were going, wow, that's really cool. Oh, I want to do that more. And I said, yeah, everybody do it. If we all start doing it, if we take for granted, hey, we're going to manage our energy. We're going to show up in the way that we can best show up. You know, I, we was, make that doing, I was doing when I was, uh, you know, uh, in Microsoft, I was doing some of my one-on-ones 
if our you know office was like close to the river or close to some you know natural environment i was doing like physical 101s i've got my recorder and we did physical 101s while walking you know right and i do i have like because i have like wireless like 20 meters around my house so those ioc calls i'm doing sometimes from my garden you know right i have like table there and my chair and I, you know, watch and listen. It's good because that's a, it's kind of the, you know, you have a, you have two uh, things from both from uh, the, the best from the both uh, things, right? So let's let's talk now about those four energies. You know, we have obviously physical energy, and that consists of our, you know, food. One thing which I would, you know, recommend you it's helping a lot. Everybody, everybody knew, and I think even kids they know. That you should not eat before the bed. It's they are saying like two, three hours before you you go asleep, you should not eat. But what they what they found out, it's also helpful not to eat one hour after you get up in the morning. Okay, so you're getting you know longer fasting window basically, right? It was, I, I'm, it's not an issue for me because I do the sport in the morning always because. And, and that there was a rational reason because I never knew and I was in Microsoft where my day will end up. Basically. Exactly. You never know, you never know, right? So yeah. that's why I was like running or you know having exercise in the morning. So th- th- this is this is really good. And then obviously, you know, uh, a lot of water uh, and you know the diet, that's up to you. Then uh, people should move. No, I'm I'm crazy guy. I, I really do sport like two, three now. When I was in Microsoft, it was like one, one and a half hour a day. Now it's between two to three hours a day, you know, right? It's, it's probably it's probably less, you know, intensive, but uh, I do like more on the endurance stuff, right? So, but if you do what, what they know, what, what the neuroscience knows, if you do uh, at least 30 minutes move, it can be just the walk. Your, you know, brain capacity and, you know, memory and so on, is improving by 30%, okay? Oh. Yeah. Now, sleep, right? Sleeping is very important because you are not only getting, uh, you know, back your physical energy, but you are also getting back your mental energy because even if you do something you like, all of those hormones like endorphin, dopamine, uh, and etc., are released and other chemicals are cleaning your brain during the sleep. And if you don't have enough sleep, you are not getting, uh, you know, in the morning, like mentally ready for another great day, right? So sleep is very important. Unfortunately, people sleep six hours today in average. Human beings should sleep seven to eight hours, you know, like adults, kids even more. There is another reason why the sleep is important, and especially if you can sleep as much as you can before the midnight. Explain why. Because if we learn something new, whether it's in the school or in our jobs, we think that we learn during that activity. It's not true, actually. Those synapses, synapses are connections between the neurons, are creating during the deep sleep, basically, right? This is why sleep is so important. And if you go, I used to have one, you know, top athlete, and he was not able to sleep before 1 a.m., and he, he was not, like, remembering what he learned with the coach day before. And the reason was that, because there was not enough deep sleep. So the, the, it is good also for the, for the learning. So that's yeah. only... Yeah, and I want to add in something sure. here that's very yes. important about sleep. So many people do two things that really get in the way of their sleep. First, if you're burning so much energy during the day, you actually, it's hard to unwind then to be able to sleep. So if you do a better job of really managing your energy throughout the day, not having so many things deplete you, taking a few seconds where you just breathe or reconnect, you'll find it's much easier to fall asleep and to stay asleep. The other thing that we do is this wonderful, amazing word in Chinese, and we do, it's translated into English, it's called revenge bedtime procrastination. We had so much chaos throughout the day. We were running here, we were answering these emails, we were running out this project. So at the end of the day, I just want a little time and space for myself. I just want the calm. I want nobody to bother me. So I'm going to stay up late on Netflix. Yes, you feel like you're exerting some control, 
but you're losing sleep. So have the control to say, yes, I want my space. And I know that the time best spent would be to go to sleep and put the phone down. I see you've added some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some... We will, let's go now yeah. through what they, and then we will continue with those energies. Yeah. So uh, Miko is saying the best way to wake up in the morning is having ice cold shower. I do the same. Mm -hmm. In case of studying, working, fast exercise, short walk, taking small breaks during the day to stay focused on the task. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. This is Wim Hof method. It's like, you know, uh, breathing uh, and the cold water. And he's like putting you in artificial stress, you know, right? And that's that's improving like the peak of you know adrenaline, and that's improving your immunity. It's really good. I just do it like for two years, and it's helping a lot. I do it, but I have to tell you, I never enjoy it. I never got used to it. it I never look forward to my cold showers in the winter. Yeah, yeah. and Miko, Miko is uh, talking about a very important thing, and those are like strategic breaks. And yeah. I, you know, I I tell you what I learn. If I do like, I can teach, you know, my course for seven hours and then I'm in the taxi and there's a half an hour between my course and the other presentation, which I need to do in the evening. I'm able to do like 10 minutes meditation and I'm absolutely refreshed. Then I need to have a longer, obviously like sleep and so on. But those, you know, like strategic breaks are really good. It, it can be like five, 10 minutes only. It yeah. it doesn't matter how long. What matters is the quality of the break. That you need to be really in the present moment, right? You you mean you need to be aware, but not to think. And that's that's basically meditation. <laughs> yes, I I facilitated a team workshop yesterday, and we had an hour for lunch. And I saw yeah. that the energy it was such an, a major intensive morning. And I looked at everyone, and I said. Let's have a 10 minute walking break. Let's just go outside. We were in the heart of Zurich and, and people walked by themselves. It wasn't like, oh, let's chit chat. Let's have lunch together. It was like, everybody just take their time, get moving, have some space, clear the mind, get the fresh air. And then the rest of the afternoon, we were re-energized and ready to dive back in. Had we not done that, had we gone from learning something new directly to chatting with our colleagues directly back, too much. So these That's are the true. kind of breaks. This 10 minutes made the next four hours much more productive, right? Yeah. Okay. Vladimir is saying that I heard no longer than 20 minutes after wake up without the full break. Because uh, this information, what I have like one hour, it's from, you can, you know, watch it. In fact, there's a, there's a great video uh, from Andrew Huberman, who is a, like the neuroscientist. I, I think it doesn't matter what they try to say that it's good to have like longer, you know, break of not eating, you know, right? Some people are like fasting for the day. I do like fasting 12, 15, you know, hours, but it's good. Like you're getting more energy because, uh, you know, if you, if you eat like all the time, all day, you know, uh, it's not necessary. At least me, like my body is really like I have, look, if I, for example, if I need to do some presentation, which needs to go very well, I need to eat like three hours before the presentation and, and nothing like very, you know, heavy. Okay. Patrick Schick, this is, a, this is a different. He needs to get like spaghetti or some pasta or something light also like three hours before. But if he would not have it, he would not play very well. I would still be able to do presentation, right? But, but it's like my, you know, rhythm. If I, if I do like whatever fruits, it can be like one hour before, you know, right? But what I hate, it's like really eating and then speaking, you know, right? Because it's taking too much energy from you and too much, you know, blood for, from your brain. And it's hard to, you know, think, yes. right? Yeah, I mean, really you, can, you can obviously, I mean, I did tons of the presentations. I can present all the time. But <laughs> I would not be what I like to really think during my presentation and to make it every time a little bit, you know, you know what I mean, a little bit different, yeah. you know. You got to shake it up. But this is what the difference is between performing well and performing peak at your absolute yeah. best. Right. And yeah. absolutely. So, Vladimir, obviously, everybody's body is different. Their metabolism is different. Your health conditions are different. Right. We neither one of us are doctors. So, you know, exactly. don't, don't let us do your diets. 
And many people have been having success with intermittent fasting. I personally am too nervous to give up my breakfast. I love my breakfast <laughs> food so much. Maybe yes, one day I'll be inspired. People like, uh, you know, the, the my guys, like I have a one goalkeeper. He's a, you know, real athlete, very good goalkeeper. And he's not having a breakfast, which is quite interesting. And, and again, many, many athletes are have, saying like, without breakfast, I cannot function, you know, right? But this guy's like, hey, you know, I, I have like just a coffee and my first, you know, meal is really lunch. So, yeah. Fernando, Fernando is in, in Brazil now, you know. So, I enjoy taking uh, underground and enjoy the present moment. This is interesting because I'm also going, I go like by car and then I, I'm taking underground to the center of the park. The crowd, expression, details, and expression, connectedness. This is interesting, Fernando, but now you are if you have a mask you are losing like uh, because it, it, i mean if you if you take like face expression it's a lot around the eyes for sure but then also like what the mouse and if you cannot almost if you have a mask you cannot figure out if that person is smiling or not you know, or if that person is pissed off you know? <laughs> Yes, and well, what but I love this is, nice. this is nice, and you know what, Fernando, is uh, remind me that you can really take like ordinary situation to be mindful, right? You can, I, I can mindfully, you know, drink this powder drink, you know, right? Or you know, I can mindfully, you know, move my mouse or whatever, you know, right? You can mindfully do everything, and more you do, you are better concentrated, and then what it what it does to your performance. If you are able to be more in the present moment, your brain predicts much better. If something is happening around you, your brain is predicting much better what is what is happening because your brain is comparing what is sitting in your long-term memory, what is your experience with what, what's going on. And then you know, it's a Lisa Feldman. She you remember she was a having a having a you know presentation for us. She's she is good with it. And and that's possible only if you are in the present moment. If your brain is not if you are not concentrated, your brain is not reflecting reality. You are, you know, reacting, but it's not the right reaction, you know, right? So that's why what he's suggesting here is really good, you know. And the other thing that I love from this and that I take away from this is, so obviously a, a lot of us say, oh, I want to be in the present moment, but it's very hard because I'm thinking about my to-do list and all of the things I need to do and where I need to go. And I hate being stuck here. And I just want to be at work already because I got to make sure I get this thing done before blah, blah. you've already burned your energy, right? <laughs> so often what I'll do. So for example, when I'm going to be stuck in traffic, if I'm driving, of course, I'm going, I'm going to be late and am I going to get there on time? And is this like, you know, and I've just learned to tell myself, Lisa, whatever the moment is, you can't change it. So accept and just be, right? And so instead of saying, am I going to be late? What am I going to do? I say, okay, is anyone going to die if I'm late? I'm not an ambulance driver, right? I'm not an open heart surgeon. Is anyone going to die? No? Okay. Then breathe, let it go, and just be. And I think that's what we have to do more of. So when we're on the underground, often we're like, yeah, but this is just a temporary spot because I need to be going somewhere. We're thinking about the future or we're reflecting on the past. What happened today? What do I need to process? Right. And so the mind is swirling and whirling and it's killing our energy. Just be just say, hey, for this moment, I'm going to be on the, the what do you call it? The underground. Yeah. yeah. And that's an energy saver. Yeah. So, Edward, uh, helping people with your experience only if you are asked. I like and that. And having success like good negotiation or notice that your advice is followed. Small successes that make the day. Yeah, it is really. Uh, one by one, you know, because for each and every success or each and every achievement, of if we help, it's if we help somebody, it's even like it's not only dopamine, or like a reward, but it's also oxytocin because if they are saying, hey, you know, we really like what I do and it, it's great. It, it's absolutely true. It's, you know, one by one and you build like your day. And if you go like one by one, you, you can nicely fight your negativity bias because your amygdala is five to ten times faster than your logical part of the brain and then the neocortex. And if you go like that, hey, this happened well, this happened well, it's good, you know, like you, you see, hey, Maybe one, two things were not going very well, but 10, 10 things were going very well today. So it was a great day. 
Yeah. Exactly. I have a gratitude practice that I do at night with my two young daughters, six and eight years old. And at the end of every night, I ask them, so what are you grateful for today? And sometimes it's, I got a chocolate cake today, right? Um, but sometimes it's, I love you and I'm so happy I'm with you, mommy. Today, I was I was traveling a lot this week. So they said, we're so glad you're home with us today and you could just spend some time with us today, right? And so instead wrong what's burning the energy we're refocusing on what was lisa did we lose you for a second oh you're back no. yeah okay. okay yeah we you were lost uh, well i think we're back now yeah so thanks edward and really important point only if you're asked <laughs> stop trying to force people to take your advice <laughs> Not you, Jan, everyone. We all try to do it, right? And we all think, well, it would be a, just a much better place if everybody did what I thought. But it's not true, right? As coaches, we obviously know the right answer sits within ourselves. And the best, the best help that we can provide is just giving the person a space to think it through and find their own best solutions. No, I, I agree. It, because if you, you have like second or the third session, it can be a bit, you know, different structure, but if it's like for the first time, that's for sure. Fernando is the, here is the another uh, interesting, if, it, if he is driving, no more news, deliberative choice of my soundtrack on the way to appointment. Yeah, the same, you know, way, it, it can give you some, you know, rhythm, right? And I, I think that's a, that's a smart way, right? Yes. Because I was like, my, my brain like 20 years ago was like struggling i need to manage so many things because i need to succeed and now my brain goes like in order to succeed i need to go like what fernando is recommending like one thing at a, at a time you know right one present moment after the other you know and, yeah. and and this is it and that's the same with like my athletes those athletes who really succeeded whether it was at the olympic games or patrick schick at the european championship are good because they really go like one 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 by one you know right because they need to whatever happened with your last ball you need to concentrate on the next ball right then this is it that's it so for those of you who are the, if people who are going back to the office don't get overwhelmed don't think there are ten thousand things to do don't think because i'm going back one day a week i need to cram everything in just focus no multitasking Multitasking, multitasking is a myth. Nobody can do it. Focus, get it done, and move on, right? That will help your energy. That will reduce your stress. That will get more done, and you'll give exactly. your best performance in each one. There's another another good, and I do it also. I start with the portion of water as soon as possible after wake up. Yeah, it will start your... You know metabolism it's it's good it's even good to you know drop a couple of drops of limon you know if you if your yeah. stomach is okay with it but water i do like you know glass of water before even before the running absolutely i do i drink water and i take a probiotic in the morning because you've been fasting so it can really absorb into your body and i do usually wait that hour or two before yeah. breakfast Everyone is saying that the but the most important thing is to laugh and take everything a little easier. And yeah. I think you know what I what is look, I I'm not very much serious. I never I never was so uh, and you know serious, but I really what I enjoy about you know me and now I will be like non I'm I'm critical, right? I really can make a fun of me and it it's giving me a lot of power, you know, right? <laughs> you know. I'm not, like I'm like if if you if you would see like my the pictures which I'm like doing during my seminars it's still like when I was six years old you know I didn't improve at all you know <laughs> and and the, the tons of the corrective feedback which I'm getting from my wife you know even uh, today right she she was like saying hey again you know I explain you that one thousand times that you need to do that 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 and I'm like yeah but you know. This is it, you know, right? <laughs> hey, <it's a> really... <laughs> I think you also told me, Jan, once that your wife was in the car while you were taking a call and she was like, are you a teenage boy or are you a grown man? <laughs> <laughs> That's but we it. do. We have to have more fun. I mean, everything is so serious. Business feels so serious. I think one of the great things that came out of COVID is we actually remembered that people are human. 
weird, right? We're not machines and transactions and business. We're actually humans who have kids at home and have lives at home. So take advantage of some of the shifts of these new ways of working. As you get back into the office, don't default to what you used to do. Come bring a little bit more authenticity, have a little bit more fun, shake things up a little bit. You'll be surprised. You might be feeling a little scary. Take the risk. You'll be surprised at how much better you feel coming into work when it's a fun and interesting environment. Exactly. There's a mar one more from Fernando. Inter intermissi on between the session. Go outside and walk calmly for 10 minutes. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. Exploring sensation. Explore by all of your senses. You know, right? I. You know what? When I was in Microsoft, my senses was mainly ears and sometimes my eyes. That was it. You know, right? <laughs> Today, I figured out, hey, we have like five. And then the, the six is like feeling your body, right? Yes. It's called kinesthetic sense, you know, like feeling what is happening in your body because your body is giving you very often signals, right? Um, this is the thing about managing your energy. People at work, we think we're a brain and our body just walks this brain mm. around. No, you have to listen to the full body because that's actually where you will notice where's your energy positive, refreshing, where is it draining? And only then can you start to manage your energy. So don't think, oh, but I'm a business person. So I need to be rational, logical. I need to be in my brains. Enough of this esoteric, like be in your body, mindfulness stuff. No, it's just about noticing so that you can get to your peak performance. If you want to be successful, every leader figures out at one point or another, oh, I actually have to listen to this thing. Some do it earlier and they get much more advanced, much more quickly, and some do it later and then they suffer the consequences. So you're welcome that we're letting you know now, if you listen to your body, you'll feel better and you'll be more successful. And there's a, Fernando is agree with, with us on the interim fasting and uh, the getting sort of specialized in eye expression. And let's, last one from uh, uh, Miko. I recognize, now by the way, I recognize during the remote era, if I dress nicely while staying at home, I get a stronger attachment to work and feel like at the office. This yeah. is, uh, this is, and I love intermittent fasting. This is quite interesting because it, it can be, you know, right? If you, if, if you really like, uh, hey, you feel like, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm really dressed up. Give you one, I give you that. That's a, a very different example, but it has to do like dressing, like connecting, you know, or disconnecting from the past. Uh, one of my guys who won, you know, medal at the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Alexander Shupenich, uh, in fencing, he basically lost in semi final and he got like 17 minutes to get ready for the fight for the bronze medal. Okay. So, and his mindset, when you lost, your mindset is pretty much like you are down, you see? Yeah. So I sent him an email, hey, it's everything, forget about everything, here is the battle for the third place. And what he did, what he did, he changed his dress, he changed like the new, he took a new fencing dress, and he take another song, you know, right? It's He like cut from the, he cut himself from the past. And that was it. And that's why I think it, it, it's a very different example. But I think it like dressing is some signal for our body. This is really important. Okay. Yeah. It definitely oh, is. Like, if you have like tie and the jacket and here you are in the slips, you know, whatever. <laughs> so it's like, it's like semi, it's like semi important. You know? But this is how, so ev in my everyday meetings, I showed up like this, but I will tell you during the really important meetings, I would get fully dressed because it's your sure. body does have muscle it's memory. Healthy. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. all about the, the mindset. Absolutely. And here's a funny story. There was a woman who really wanted to channel in, how do I get to my best? How do I always show up at my best? And so she spent seven, I think it was $700 to buy a pair of Oprah Winfrey's old shoes. So <laughs> Oprah put them up on charity. She went, maybe 700 sounds too cheap. Maybe it was 7,000, right? But she invested in buying Oprah's shoes and she put them in her closet. And anytime she was feeling small or down or uncertain, didn't know what to do, she would literally go, okay, if I'm, if I'm channeling my inner Oprah, and she would stand in Oprah's shoes and say, I'm standing in my Oprah. 
And she would find her answers and move forward from there. And it's just a very physical way of changing your mindset. It is because, you know, uh, and that let's talk about the emotional energy, you know, which is the second energy. Uh, emotions are contagious, basically, because we have what we call mirror neurons. So we are mirroring people around ourselves. And again, emotions, as all, you know, experiences are not like set up in your brain. Emotions are created. OK, that's why if we, I would take me and Lisa for sure, we would, uh, you know, find some animal. I would be afraid of that animal. You would not be afraid and the other way around. It's really based on like our, you know, past experience. That's why we should not fight our emotions. Emotions are created. Emotion is basically where your thought is touching your body because you you feel immediately your emotion on your body. If you, if you have like positive emotion, you feel good. If it's negative, you don't feel good, right? So you, you need to catch what what was the thought which created this, you know, for positive emotions are fine, which created this negative emotion. And there's a huge difference if you would say, I have a fear. I have an emotion called fear. I have a fear, which means I agree with my amygdala that I'm fearful. And then you are done, basically. It will go, you know, more and more stress. If you will say, I observe my fear, it means that your logical part of the brain is still watching your amygdala. And the next question is, what I'm fearful of, you know, right? Why do I have this fear? And then you can work with that emotion. It, it makes no sense to really fight it, but it's good to observe it, right? And, you know, I was trained by, there's an organization called Seal Fit. This is pretty much, that there's a guy, uh, Mark Divine, who was 20 years in the Seal operation. This is the toughest unit in, you know, yeah. US Navy, right? And what, what they they train them basically to do it. They are also fearful, but they do it in spite of the fear. Okay, they know how to work with the fear. It's the same with the top athletes. They are also fearful, but they 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 do it. So that's kind of how to work with you know emotions. I, I would be very much interested in Lisa's opinion. Yeah, well, this is what I feel is so important. So here's what happens, right? I actually specialize in helping people with being able to uh, articulate their emotions. So a lot of my top performers, they've learned mental strength and resilience. I don't have emotions. If I have a bad emotion, I just push it away and I move forward or I reframe it and I'm positive and I'm go, 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 go. And that's good. Except when it's not good because we're not in touch with our emotions Listen, there's a thing called the body keeps the score. If in your mind you've decided, I don't feel that, but you haven't really released it from your body, guess what? It's still there. Exactly. You're still feeling it. Because your mind is like the chemical factory and those all of those chemicals, good or bad, are in your body. Absolutely. Yes. And so what people have to do is now if, like um, Jan was saying, if you're in a sporting event, you have 17 minutes, cut the emotion, cut it. Don't think about it. Don't be curious about it. Don't explore it, cut it and go perform. But later, or if you're in the office, reflect, figure out, oh, I was feeling bad today. Bad how? Bad, what does that mean exactly? I tell everyone, if you're feeling angry, most of the time anger is a masking emotion because you felt some other uncomfortable emotion that you don't want to feel. And we're so uncomfortable with our emotions and particularly for men, but cultures have said in business, you don't feel your emotions. You don't act emotional. It's nothing personal in business. You be strong, you be resilient. And so actually the, the problem is during COVID-19, we have too many pent up emotions, too much pent up uncertainty, and it's going to come out in ways like anger because we just can't control it anymore. If we can clear our emotions, if we can show up and say, I'm like Jan said perfectly, I'm observing that I'm feeling hurt. Why is that? Right? You don't have to go, oh, I'm hurt. I'm going to go cry yeah. in a corner. You don't have to let the emotions you run the You can work on the trigger. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But what, you can only work on solving the root cause of the problem if you are able and willing to recognize what you're feeling yeah. and acknowledge it. Right? I absolutely agree. And that's going to be something. Yeah. Yeah, on, the, on, the, on the mental energy, this is pretty much what we talk uh, here when, you know, Fernando 
was saying, I live in the present moment. It's really about your concentration. And today people can concentrate 11 to 12 minutes. So the best thing how to use your mental energy is to be as much as you can in the present moment. It's a very hard because your brain needs to process in one week what the brains of our predecessors used to process 100 years ago for the whole life. So there's a huge pressure, okay? But, and that's the third energy, spiritual energy. If, you know, what you do has a lot of meaning for you, then your concentration is much, much better. And what, what I realize that if people are more curious, you, you, have, you are less stressful and you can concentrate, you know, better because you are less stressful. Because, like, what, what the amygdala is doing, fight, flee, or freeze, which means, like, negative, uh, zoom in. What, you know, if you are uh, curious, it's like positive, zoom out. You have so many new things. So give you what I did with, you know, a couple of uh, people at the Olympic Games. I said, I know you are all afraid of Olympic Games because it's one in four years, whatever. Put there like why you are afraid of on the on the paper. So you are afraid of the Olympic Games. And around, write everything. What, what do you manage to do so far when you succeeded in your life? Okay. And what it does, it, it's like looking on your life from the helicopter and you sound like, hey, there's the Olympic game. I'm afraid, but it's like one again, one step on you know my way, right? And here is the on, the on the spirit, on the meaning, what they found out in the uh, in the Huberman lab on Stanford, okay? They figured out, I give you one example. If, for example, you know, soccer player would be so much attached to, like, scoring the goals. Whenever he or she will score the goals, that's great, you know, right? Then what they figured out, that, like, the peaks of the dopamine are created and it's getting, like, contagious, but the problem with those peaks is that they are putting your baseline of dopamine down, basically. That's mm -hmm. why those people, if you, they are concentrated only on results, sometimes they are finishing their careers very soon. On the other hand, if they love what they do, if they love soccer, if they love, you know, the, the, the performance, if they, if they love what they do, those peaks are not generated, but they are moving the baseline up continually, you know, right? This is the reason, and that, that's it's the same. If you if you read uh, the the book mindset from what is her name, Carol Carol Dweck. Carol Dweck, fixed mindset versus you know growth mindset. If you really concentrate, if it's your meaning, what do you do, and you concentrate on the meaning, so you're getting you know a little bit better every day, even though maybe you are losing, but you're still learning from the from the failure. You are you are a better version of yourself every day. Every day you're getting better and better. And I and I think that's the that's the key how to work with the energy. Because if you have a meaning, you can concentrate better. Your emotions are better. And if your emotions are better, your body is you know healthier. That's for sure. Yes. So I know Jan that you have a call in two minutes with yeah. an NHL player. I NHL, think, right? NHL. Yeah. <laughs> so what I want to make sure we have enough time sure. to do is to just wrap up because we went sort of you know left, right, zigzags yeah. all around. The the point of what I'm taking away from the conversation is if you're going back to the office, really think about all the ways that you can start to manage your energy. What are the things that drain you? And try to remove some of them, right? Put on they the were some great recommend, They were some great recommendations from our experienced colleagues also on, on here and exactly. from us. Absolutely. Exactly. So there's, there's get rid of the things that drain you, add more of the things that give you energy, like purpose, like cold showers, intermittent fasting. There's many things you can do. And if you can balance that energy, if you can start to make sense of here's what I'm feeling, here's how I'm going to show up. I'm going to be in the present moment. I'm not going to stress all over the place. Then you're able to take on whatever comes your way at work. So if you have to go in your boss says you have to come in all the time. If your boss says you have to come in sometimes, if your boss says you can't come in, we're in lockdown in this country. Whatever comes your way, you'll be stable and centered and ready to handle it. And that's really all we can control. And that's why it's so important to manage our energy because then no matter what the situation is, I'm cool and I'm ready. No, this is absolutely true, Lisa. That's a nice summary. 
If you look into the history, Stoics in you know old Greece, they were like saying, you should take care of the things you can influence. And this is really like you, your energy, your you know thoughts, your body and stuff like that. And thanks again for some great you know recommendations you you gave everybody here. So guys, we are very much looking forward, you know, uh, for uh, next discussion. Uh, maybe, you know, if you wanted to have some special team, you can drop it to my LinkedIn or, you know, Lisa uh, LinkedIn. So we can, we have a lot of uh, teams on our own, but obviously we would, you know, also enjoy some of your teams. And if you can share with, share those, you know, things on LinkedIn, on YouTube with your colleagues, with whom you think it's uh, maybe, you know, good for them, but that will be great. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and we'll be back in two weeks, every second Thursday. Absolutely. Bye-bye. See you then. Bye-bye.